All right. So because of low battery and because my my I was trying to save multiple things, my computer shut down on me. I had to restart. And so the last tutorial video ended before 15 minutes. But that gives me the opportunity here to show why I save when I do. So it's saved into downloads. There it is. Now I'm going to move that saved PSD in my downloads that I renamed into my folder. And you see how quickly it should work. So the fact that it was taking so long was problematic. And so that's why it was good to save. Computers can, can have a hard time, and that's all right. OK, now I know where my file is. I've marked it with green so it's easy to find. I've given it a name that has my name in it in case I ever lose it somewhere and have to search for it, and a description. So now when I say in Photopea, I open from my computer, I can just find it and open it, and it will have all the layers already there with all of my changes thus far. And then when I say file and just save, it will update it. Which is very helpful. You can save your changes as you go, but only after you rename it. If you don't rename it, it will just keep making multiple copies of your original each time you save it in your downloads folder. And you'll learn that just when you do it on your own computer. All right, so I've got those elements in place. I've edited what I want to edit from it. Now that they're rasterized, well, what do I want to erase from the bag? Let's see. Well, first, I might want to move the bag to line up a little bit better. Maybe right there. And then what do I want to erase? I'm going to use my lasso again. Not a whole lot. I think I just want to erase the handle. Oh, but I have to rasterize it first. I think I'll erase a little bit more where it overlaps with the cactus. Because I can see that being confusing visually. And after you've drawn a selection, you can actually use your arrow keys to move it if you need to. Like that. Or you can even click within the selection and move it that way to delete. Then we have other tools besides just the regular lasso. If you hold down on it, you'll see the polygon lasso and the magnetic lasso. I almost never use the magnetic lasso because it's not very exact. But the polygonal lasso allows you to just click a point, and it will do straight lines. And then click another point, and that can help you, since it can be hard, especially with just a trackpad, to do straight lines. It can help you clean up your selections but you always have to, to finish them. And then to deselect, you just hit Command D. Okay, I don't love that little tiny white space there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and erase that out as well with the polygonal lasso. And then delete. Then hit Command D to deselect. Okay. So before I start adding the speech bubbles, I want to see what this all looks like in black. So how can I change my blue lines to black? Well, I'm just going to limit it to one layer so it's easy to see. So the first thing I'm going to do now that they're rasterized and I can take things away is I'm going to use my magic wand, which is underneath the lasso, which I'll change back to the regular lasso. These are selection tools. The lasso allows you to draw a selection and then do something with it, like delete, as long as you're selecting the layer. The magic wand makes a selection without drawing, and it makes a selection based on the similarity of the pixels. So if we look at the options here, we want zero pixel feather, which keeps the edge nice and sharp. We want anti-alias checked, and we want contiguous checked. And then for tolerance, usually a standard is 32. That means basically how accurate is it? How close do the pixels need to be to be selected? I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Because we're using line art, all the pixels are very similar. So when I use the magic wand and I click on the white, it will select all of the white that's touching in the image. And when I hit delete, it will delete it away with fairly good accuracy. So you're really pretty sharp with those settings. So if I want the white out here, I have to click it. And then all those white pixels that are touching each other will all be selected and deleted. Now that I only have the blue pixels in the image, the easiest way to to make them all black is to simply select on the blue with that magic wand. But you see how it only affects the pixels that are touching. So if I wanted to affect all the blue pixels within the image, I'll hit Command D to deselect, and I'll click on, or I'll click off contiguous. And now it will select all the blue pixels everywhere that match where I clicked. And then what I can do is simply say, edit, fill, this is like a paint bucket, with black, solid black at 100% normal mode. And then Command D to deselect. Then I can see how those two look together. And it's a little much. But next, how about with the figure? I might decide to control T and stretch this figure a little bit so that it lines up better with the line art. Like so. And then I can use, this is all good practice. That's why we do five different layers. I can click all the whites and delete them at once. Click all the blues and fill it with black. All at once. And then to kind of clean it up, I can now use my lasso. and do some more deleting, either with the polygonal lasso or the regular lasso. And line art seems simple, but 
it's in simplicity where we notice the little little deviations so i might need to delete a little bit from the cactus layer as well. If I want it all to line up into my own original image. Next, the bag. I'm going to select the white. Contiguous is unchecked, so it will be all the whites. Hit delete. Click on the blue. Say edit, fill with black. There are other ways to do that, but that's one way. We're going to be using edit fill quite a bit. And now I might think, okay, I like how the cactus is covering the, the bag there, but I want to delete the cactus. Here. As it covers the strap. Here. But I'll leave that. And then my edge looks a little raggedy here on the bag. And remember, we're not creating any pixels, so we're not going to be painting or drawing or adding content. We can just edit and take away for this exercise. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit on the bag. within reason. And then maybe delete this away from the cactus. So this is really going to get you to pay attention to layers, to the different properties they have. And that's essential to compositing. Okay, now what do I do with this tree? Well, because once I delete, I can't get it back, I'm going to actually make a duplicate of the tree layer. And we went over this a little bit in our first class, but to duplicate, you can go to layer, duplicate layer, but the shortcut for it that we'll be using all the time is command J. And it will duplicate a whole layer, or if you have a selection, it will just duplicate the selection onto a new layer. Then I'm going to turn off the original layer, and then I'm going to erase from this one. And that way, if I change my mind, I still have my original source material. So what do I want to erase away? Let's see. Let's start by pruning some of these branches inside the cactus. So that kind of weaves in and out, especially where it's confusing. But I like this tree element because of how sharp and dangerous the edges look. So I do want to keep a lot of those. There's that element of aggression, menace, violence. Right. Maybe just get rid of this little barb on that cactus. And 
then I don't know if I like the little fractures in the face area or not. 